So there's been some conversation about the show Bluey this week. It began with reports that Bluey had gone woke, uh, one of the last holdouts, one of the last remaining unwoke kid shows, one of the very few to stave off the woke virus had finally succumbed to the contagion. That was the claim anyway. It was helped along by various leftists on Twitter and TikTok who were anxious to believe that the show had, ter- had taken this turn. It all stems from one brief scene in the most recent episode, which is apparently the season finale, where a character is supposedly revealed to have two moms. Uh, here's a, a woke TikToker explaining. Watch. Bluey has officially confirmed their first LGBTQ plus character or characters, should I say, in the new Bluey episode, The Sign. Now, I must admit, this is kind of like a blink and you'll miss it sort of moment because I know when I first watched the episode, I missed it. It wasn't until I went back and watched it with subtitles and then actually listened that I noticed that we have our first gay couple. They're two lesbian mums and they are the mums of Pretzel. So if you go all the way back into the Calypso scene when Pretzel is talking about his guinea pig running away, he says, my mums. And the subtitles also have it as mums as well, confirming that, yeah, he has two mums and that's our first real actual like gay couple or lesbian couple, LGBTQ plus couple that we've had confirmed in the show. And I love it. I think it was a really nice and organic way to do it. It is one of those like really subtle ones that I feel like a lot of people will miss, but in general, I thought they handled it really well. And it was just a natural way to be like, yeah, some people have two mums and that's just part of real life. But What did you think? Let me know in that comment section down below. Did you notice that he said mums the first time you watched it or did you need to rewatch it to see it or did you not know until you saw this video? And also what other kind of families do you wanna see in the future in Bluey? Because yes, there will be a future and we do have one more episode to come in this season. The sign was not the finale. Now there's some disagreement about whether the show really intended to convey that the character has two moms. Scholars have debated this point fiercely. Uh, Some have insisted that this was meant in the way that people say pops, like just kind of a slang way of referring to one mom. Uh, I I don't know if people say mums to refer to one mom in Australia. I I don't know. They have all kinds of weird words they use down there. Um, Or maybe the character didn't really say mums at all. You know, it's difficult to tell exactly. Or maybe, and this unfortunately is probably the most likely scenario, uh, is is maybe it's precisely what it sounds like, that they are introducing a character with two moms, in which case, in which case, my kids, of course, will be done with Bluey. And the left will cry, as they always do, but they'll say, well, but some people have two moms. It's part of life. Why shouldn't it be represented in the show? The problem with that argument is that, no, it's not part of life. Nobody has two moms. Nobody on the planet has two moms or has ever had two moms or will ever have two moms in the future. Every child has one mom and one mom only. There cannot be a second mom. A child's mom might be shacking up with some other woman, but that other woman is not the child's mom. A, a, a kid show that goes along with the fiction that children can have two moms is a kid show that is trying to confuse kids and indoctrinate them into an ideology that doesn't represent reality, but rather distorts and subverts it. And if Bluey has gone down this road, I'm sure that will be obvious in the coming episodes. Because um, once a kid show crosses the woke threshold, as we've seen, it's not long before they have episodes featuring drag queens and gay pride parades which is what happened with that other children's show featuring a blue dog. But let's uh, let's put the wokeness question to the side for a moment because there was more Bluey news this week. Uh, Bluey also trended as uh, this week as legions of adults gushed over the season finale. And not because of the possible lesbian mom reference, but because the episode itself touched them so deeply. They said that it was affecting and moving and emotional and devastating and profound. These are grown adults, I remind you, discussing a cartoon show for small children. Here's the USA Today headline, quote, parents are sobbing over Bluey episode The Sign. Is the show ending? Here's what to know about the poignant season three finale and what may be ahead for Bluey. Now, according to USA Today, the plot of the episode revolves around the father dog, Bandit, getting a new job that requires the family to move to a new town. Uh, And Bluey doesn't want to move, and neither does her mom, and therein lies the emotional pull of the episode. But by the end of the episode, spoiler alert, Bandit decides at the last minute that he isn't going to move, and Bluey and the mom dog are very happy. And uh, this is the poignant plot that USA Today refers to. So let's go to the article now to find out how grown adult human beings reacted to this. Quote, needless to say, some parents were in their feelings after such a heart-stirring finale. Quote, now that's what we call a stellar season finale. Also, how dare this show for preschoolers make adults get all emotional Jazz Tenke, an editor of Variety, posted on social media site X. Pro wrestler and father Johnny Gargano posted on X that the new episode is straight up Avengers Endgame level for all of us fans. Quote, what a fantastic emotional roller coaster. It's like watching SpongeBob as an adult, except it rips your heart out. Uh, that according to fan Jack uh, 
Caparucho wrote on X, my therapist isn't going to know what hit her. Sensational television. Fan Sam Gavin wrote on X, no, I'm not joking. Bandit and Chili are parenting goals. I love these characters so much. Fan Brittany Bailey wrote on X that her husband uh, wrote, uh, she wrote on X that her husband woke her family up to watch the episode and then her husband cried his eyes out. Quote, the last time he cried was at the birth of our baby. Bluey is so much more than a kid's cartoon. On Instagram, influencer Bethany Kratt joked that Oppenheimer was cool and everything, but did you see the Bluey episode, The Sign? You can't tell me these Bluey episodes aren't cinematic masterpieces, Kratt wrote, adding that her family dog is named after the character Bandit. They generate more feelings and emotions than any movie ever has, and I feel like I need to give my therapist a call to unpack things after each one. Now, by the way, here's the picture that uh, the, uh, the uh, Bluey fan Brittany Bailey provided showing her husband weeping as he watched the cartoon. So this is a, this is a, there you go. This is a grown adult man sobbing uncontrollably over an episode of a cartoon show aimed at preschoolers. And the kid's not even paying attention. You know, look, the kid's looking at that. He's, he's bored by it. And the grown adult man is watching. He's, in, he's, he's, he's absolutely absorbed by it. And he's breaking down in tears. This is perhaps, you look at this image here, and I don't mean to pick on this guy. I don't know anything about him. He might be a nice guy, but this is perhaps the least manly image that has ever been captured on film. It, it is modern masculinity personified. When you want the best tickets at any sporting event or concert, you have to act quickly or someone else will get those tickets instead. Similarly, if you're hiring for your business, you want to find the most talented people for your open roles before the competition scoops them up. The best way to do that is with ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter helps you find qualified candidates fast. And right now, you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash Walsh. Immediately after you post your job, ZipRecruiter's smart technology shows you qualified people for that role. Once you've reviewed your list of qualified candidates, you can swiftly invite your top choices to apply. This streamlined process encourages them to apply sooner, allowing you to fill that role faster. Amp up your hiring performance with ZipRecruiter and find the best talent fast. See why four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Walsh and try it for free. Again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash Walsh. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Now, before we analyze this any further, um, let's just watch the climactic, climactic scene where Bandit changes his mind about the move. This is the scene that absolutely wrecked so many adult Bluey fans. And I have this clip because it was posted to Twitter by a guy named John Cartwright, another grown adult male, who posted it with this caption. It's absolutely crazy to have this air with all the other toddler shows. It's on such a different level. The clip, we should know, note, has uh, been viewed 20 million times with thousands of comments from other adults calling the scene incredible and beautiful, a masterpiece, heart-wrenching, and so on. Many adults are treating this scene like it's one of the most profound pieces of art they have ever seen in their entire lives. And that's not an exaggeration, and they're not being ironic. They really mean it. So let's watch a little bit of this. Here it is. So beautiful, so beautiful. It changed my life. It's a life changing. I've never seen anything as beautiful as this in my entire life. Uh, that's basically it. The, the scene, you know, that, that ripped the hearts out of so many adults. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in their lives. Bluey's dad changes his mind about moving, and he rips the for sale sign out of the yard, and the family is happy. Uh, the end. Now, I don't want to overanalyze this scene. There's been enough of that already. I will say that, first of all, and I don't know what led up to this and everything. I, I didn't watch the episode. But um, just as, a, as, a, you know, as a, uh, a real estate note here, you, you cannot back out of selling your house at the last minute like that. It's a violation of your contract. 
you'll probably face a lawsuit. So I don't know if that's going to be the first episode of the next season is a bandit facing a major lawsuit and uh, by because of families like homeless. They were going to move in. They already sold their house. Now they got nowhere to go. You refuse to move out of your house. Maybe they're squatters now. They're squatters. They refuse to leave. It's like that's what happens in the next season. The next season is Bluey's family becomes squatters. Um, and second, this is actually a terrible message for children. It's, it's actually an awful message. This is the worst. It's the worst. Well, I'm not going to say it's the worst message I've ever seen in a, in a children's show, but it's not great because sometimes families have to move. You know, I've had to move my family several times. It's difficult for kids. Yeah, it is. But that's why it would be more useful for parents if the show ended with the family actually moving and Bluey learning to love the new house and the new neighborhood. Because in real life, your dad is not going to change his mind and dramatically rip the for sale sign out of the yard on the day that you're supposed to pack up and move. And if he did, by the way, your mom in the front seat would not be ecstatic with glee. She would be incredibly pissed off that her husband just made this decision without consulting her at all. She didn't even mention it. Didn't even ask her. You know, um, in real life, you know, if, if you're supposed to be moving, kids, you're moving. It's just, it's happening. And these kinds of shows are supposed to be made for children to teach them helpful little life lessons. But the lesson taught here is not helpful at all. In fact, the lesson seems to be, if your daddy really loves you, he won't make you move. So thanks a lot, Bluey. Thanks a lot. But that's not the point. The point is that, again, fully grown adults are treating this episode of a preschool children's show like it's the most beautifully devastating work of art they have ever laid their eyes on. And I can maybe excuse some of this to some extent for women. Like my wife would probably cry if she watched that scene, but she cries when anything vaguely sad or heartwarming happens on screen. I've seen her tear up watching a 30-second life insurance commercial. Women are emotional in that way. Now, my wife would certainly not cry over that scene and then declare that it was a, an artistic masterpiece Instead, she would like, maybe tear up a little bit, and she would say something like, oh, that was kind of sweet. And then she'd move on with her day, and that would be it, right? Um, I can excuse women crying over a sappy scene in a children's show about a cartoon dog, but not then acting like the children's show about a cartoon dog is a work of cinematic brilliance that puts Citizen Kane to shame. Yet the greater problem here is the men. Uh, we have grown men not only weeping over a cartoon, but then announcing it publicly to the world without shame, and then saying they're going to talk to their therapist about it. That's how, that's how uh, affected they were, is that they're going to talk to their therapist about Bluey. Now, look, you may think that I have gone too far at times in my demand for stoicism from men. Even if you think that, you must admit there should be limits. Now, I personally believe that as a man, your wife and your children should almost never see you cry. Only in the most extreme circumstances, in, in response to the most devastating tragedies, should they witness such a display. Uh, a man should have, and I don't say that ironically or to be funny, I, that's what I, I really believe. A man should have control over his emotions and should not show weakness, especially in front of people who depend on him to be the strong and confident one. And when you, when you, when, if you cry as a man, especially in front of your kids and your wife, you make them feel vulnerable. You make them feel like you don't have control over the situation. And, and again, only in the extreme circumstances should you put your family members in a spot like that. You do it too often or you do it for frivolous reasons, and they will start to feel uh, unsafe and unsecure, and they'll lose respect for you. Your wife will lose respect for you. It's like for a woman, and some will say this out loud, most won't, but this is what they all think. Uh, for a woman to witness a man crying for a dumb reason is the most repulsive thing that they could possibly witness. They, 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 it's, it's, it's disgusting to them. It really is. At like a deep primal level, it's revolting. Uh, so it's just something that you should realize. Now, perhaps you think that I'm too stringent in this regard. Fine. Uh, we can debate that another day. What we should be able to agree is that whatever the appropriate circumstances for men to cry, that umbrella, however wide or narrow it might be, does not cover a children's show about cartoon dogs. We must have some standards here. And by the way, it's not like anything really tragic or profound happened in the episode. They just decided not to move. Really? That? That's an emotional roller coaster for you? Is that the characters were going to move and then didn't? Uh, really? 
Now, I can see why a child might find that plot to be like really emotional, but an adult? Now, here's the thing. We, we live in a culture where adults are profoundly moved by children's entertainment. That is not because all of these adults are deeply emotional people. Now, they may be emotional, but not deeply. There's no depth there. They are shallow. They're superficial. They have grown physically, but not mentally or emotionally. Like, if you as an adult are really deeply stirred by something like that, by this corny, like, over-the-top, very emotionally manipulative, they got this song playing, that's like, way, the song is way too much, it's way too far for this scene. And, and if you can be manipulated that easily as an adult, then that's because you are a shallow person. And that's why adults still respond to children's entertainment the same as they did as children. It's like, it's like, it's like being an adult who still prefers microwaved chicken nuggets and a juice box over a nice home-cooked meal. Okay, it's like if you go to someone's house and they're serving up a delicious home-cooked meal, but, uh, but you know, maybe there's some kids there and, they, and they're just making microwave chicken nuggets for the kids and giving juice boxes. And you said to your host, oh, can I have those instead? The, yeah, the Tyson chicken nuggets that came out of the microwave. Can I get one of those? It, it's, it's like, it's, this, it's, it goes beyond just, well, people have different tastes. That, that's a, you shouldn't have that taste. That's a wrong taste to have. That's embarrassing. It shows a simplicity, but, but not the good kind of simplicity. This is the simplicity of someone whose palate hasn't developed, whose tastes and interests haven't matured. They've become adults, but they have not put away childish things. And now they're weeping over preschool entertainment and declaring it the greatest piece of art since the Sistine Chapel. It is embarrassing, even if they don't realize that they should be embarrassed. And that's why these adults are today canceled. Hey, YouTube, thanks for listening to the show. If you'd like access to my full show with no ads, you should go to dailywire.com and use promo code Walsh to get two months free on all annual plans. See you there.